Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute, stuffy wreath in the shape of acorns. So that's going to be part of it. We're going to use some of these burlap leaves that you can get at Dollar Tree. We're going to be um, making our stuffies out of canvas duck fabric that you can get at any fabric store. Uh, we're going to be using one of these just Dollar Tree wreaths in gold. I think it'll be easy to have it blend. Some burlap ribbon, also from Dollar Tree. We're going to be painting our canvas with these two colors of Waverly paint. Um, this one is called Hazelnut. And this one is called uh, Truffle. These, this is Waverly brand paint uh, from Walmart, but you can use whatever brand you want. And I want you to, as you're watching me do this project, I want you to think about how you could do this exact same idea with um, leaf, leaf shapes um, or pumpkin shapes. So you can take this idea and totally run with it. We're gonna use some, just some stuffing. Um, we're gonna be using this stencil with some white chalk paste. And to get my shapes, I basically just traced these little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. So that's what, those are the ingredients of this project. And um, let's start at the very beginning. Okay, so the first thing I did was, where's my pencil? It's hiding right here. I traced, where did I put my little leaf shape? I have too many things on my desk right now, I know that for sure. Okay, so the first thing I did was I just traced um, my little leaf shape, the big one and the small ones, and I also made one that's about an inch larger all the way around. I just traced it on my canvas duck fabric with the pencil. Oh my word. Can I hold this so you can see? That is an acorn. Okay. And then I cut it out. All right. And I have a whole bunch of them right here. Um, and I am going to use some wax paper to work on. If I can remember where I put it. <laughs> My craft room is just crazy today. Okay, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna just use a paper plate. Okay, so I decided for my little um, canvas acorns to do a mix of the dark brown and the light brown. All right, and um, and so half are one way and half are the other way. And basically all this involves, it was super quick. Uh, I did use two coats of the paint. Okay, well, that, I've already made the decision for this one because I got it smooched on here. I'm getting towards the bottom of my paint. I have been working on this craft all day so far, and I'm excited to put it together with you guys because I think it's gonna be fabulous. Okay, there's the bottom, and this is called hazelnut. And here's the top with truffle. The sec on the second coat, you can clean up any little drips or whatnot that you have. Okay, so this is what they're going to look like. They're going to take at least an hour to dry. You can speed that up a little bit if you want by using a blow dryer or a heat gun 
or by putting them outside if you have sunshine outside today. Okay, so I have a bunch of them all ready to go. And they look like this. We're gonna be stuffing them. But before we get to that part, we are going to um, stencil them. And this is the big, this is the big stuffy that I made. I used this acorn. And I basically just traced it, you can see, with about an inch extra all the way around. So we're gonna stencil this one too. So they have two coats of the lighter brown, two coats of the darker brown. And just so you know, they do shrink up a little bit uh, when you paint them. So I didn't say any of my normal stuff. First of all, thank you so much for the stars. Um, as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle. You guys know all that usual stuff. Okay, so I'm just using chalk paste for this project. And you might be saying, why? I thought you were supposed to use ink for fabric projects. That is true. If the fabric project, project is going to be touched a lot, like if it was a t-shirt, a tote bag, a pillow or something, tea towel, or need to be washed. But this is going to form a wreath. And it's really not going to get handled much. Uh, it's never going to get put in the washing machine. So chalk paste will work just fine for this project. Okay, and I'm going to just stencil the bottom half. So, this, uh, this is my leaf all over pattern. This is what it looks like when you get it new. It's beautiful. This is what it looks like when you love it and you've used it 30 times maybe or more possibly. They start to look really cruddy. They don't have a ton of stick left to them. They have a little, um, but they still work just fine. So I'm going to use this one till it's, it's absolutely dead before I start using my new one. Okay, so I'm just going to lay my little um, acorn underneath it. And we'll have to lift up the top to peek a couple times to see where this line is. Let me move my camera back a little bit. Okay, hopefully that's better. Yes. Okay, so I am gonna remember that my line is about right here. And if you stencil the dark part of the cap of the acorn by accident, or go too far, you can just paint one more coat of, of the, um, the Waverly paint over the top to clean it up. So you can see how quick this is going to come together. I love making stuffies. I'm, I also love doing acorn projects, and I have a couple of acorn projects out right here that I'll show you in a few minutes. So I'm making this um, wreath most likely to hang in my kitchen on the pantry door. But, um, Uh, but you could use it for um, your front door, your back door, as long as it's a covered area. All right, so there's that. We'll come back to it in just a second, but I'm going to do these little ones as well. Okay, there's that one. And you'll notice that I did get a little bit of this white chalk paste in the cap part. That's not a problem. Let's see. 
and I did it with this one too, but that's okay. That's not a problem either. So, here's this. And here's our bigger one. You guys, look how amazing that looks. And I did a, I did a pretty decent job not getting my white chalk paste into um, the top of the cap. Okay, I'm throwing my stencil in a little tub of water off camera so that it can soak until I can get out to my kitchen to clean it up. So, when this is dry, I would fix this one little area right there. I would just paint one more coat of brown paint over the top of it to um, cover up where I went onto the cap. And like I said before, this will take probably an hour at least to dry. Okay, so I'm setting it over here. And I have been working ahead so you wouldn't have to sit and wait. But I haven't seen how this all comes together. So I'm excited for that. Okay, so let me get this, this off my little mat so we don't get it all over. Chalk paste is easy to clean up. Okay, good enough. Okay, so these are the two little ones that I did that will need to be cleaned up a little bit as well. But I've already done that and I have some that are ready to go. See, so here's this one. And I've already stuffed these two. And they're just, they're just slightly stuffed. They'll give our wreath sort of a 3D look, which I think is gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna just take, um, for each acorn you'll need two pieces, a front and a back, and you don't have to do anything to the back. Um, I'm just going to use my low temperature hot glue gun. I'm gonna start up here at the stem. We're not gonna even stuff that part. And if it's, um, if it's not perfect, like you can see a little bit right there, I can trim that. That's no problem. So then I'm going to go about three quarters of the way down. And I've left a little opening down here that I can stuff it. And this is fully dry. So... This is just polyfill for, from Walmart, nothing fancy. And this really doesn't even take very much at all. And I just want it to have a little bit of dimension. It doesn't have to be, you know, super, super stuffed. So who is decorating for uh, fall? I'm kind of thinking that over the weekend I'm going to do my house because I have not really done that yet. So I'm going to trim it up just a little bit so it looks nice on the front. I don't care what it looks like on the back. Okay, I think that looks fine. Okay, I've got three of these ready to go. And let's stuff this one. So this is the one that is the exact same size and shape as this very common Dollar Tree acorn wood cut out. Stay with me because as soon as we're done with this part, we're going to start the really fun part, which is assembling the wreath 
and I have a bunch of ideas. It's going to be super lightweight, so you could probably hang it with some of those command hooks on your front door if you wanted, or on your pantry door. That's kind of what I'm thinking I'll do with it. And that really big one that we stenciled first, that one I may turn into its own little stuffy that I could just hang somewhere. Okay, so you can see that I didn't, well these do shrink a little bit and I didn't do a great job in the um, tracing and cutting out part. If you have ink and not chalk paste, you can use ink, just so you know. But here's the thing. I had this question about five times yesterday. While I trim this up, let me tell you the, this question. The question was, can I use chalk paste or chalk paint on my stencils? I think there are a lot of people who are confused and think that chalk paste is the same thing as chalk paint, but they're like night and day, completely different. You can use chalk paste, which is like a piece of chalk that your teacher wrote on the blackboard when you were in school. You can use chalk paste on your stencils, but you should not ever use chalk paint because paint dries very fast and it dries completely permanent. And so if it dries, in the holes in your stencil, it's there. <laughs> and your stencil doesn't have any design to it if all of the little mesh holes are clogged up. So don't, I mean, I know it's tempting to say, well, can I just use some of this stuff? No, not if you want to be able to use your stencil like 50 times or even five times. Okay, I'm going to just put some fluff in here real quick. So chalk paint is paint. Paint is paint is paint. It could be chalk paint. It could be acrylic paint. It could be latex paint. It could be craft paint. It could be house paint, uh, you know. But paint is paint is paint is paint and paint is bad for your stencils. Uh, yeah. And when it's dry in the holes in your mesh stencil, you're, you're done. It, um, it dries very, very fast. And most of the time when people do try to use it, then they send me a message and say, help, I think I've ruined my stencil. It's all clogged up and I can't get it out. And that's when they say, oh darn, I tried to use chalk paint. Like, I'm so sorry. But I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that. So with this project, you could use ink if you have that. Um, or chalk paste, but don't use chalk paint. Okay, there's this little acorn. And if you wanted, you could do some doodly doos with the ink and chalk paste markers. But I'm going to keep this kind of simple because the design of the all over leaf pattern is pretty busy. So, but I want to show you a project. I want to show you two projects. Okay, this was a project that I did last year. And this is, um, it's the same thing. It's canvas duck that I painted. I don't know which colors I used last year. I can't remember. They look very similar. And so I painted it and then I stenciled it. This is the leopard stencil and this is the polka dot stencil. And then this is a thing that says th uh, thankful, grateful, blessed. And then I used the pins, the chalk and um, ink pins, to do these little dot, 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 dash, dot, 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 dash. And I think those add 
a lot to this because this one was plainer. And then I mounted it on this board from Walmart. So that was one thing I wanted to show you. I love that project. The other thing I wanted to show you has absolutely nothing to do with anything we're doing today. But I've been cleaning out. And I want to know if you guys remember when we made this garland last year. We used vintage paper. These are acorn, real acorn caps from my yard that I glittered. And then these are pom poms that I put in. So it's a whole, let's see if I can hang it up here. I don't know if it's long enough. Probably not. Anyways, it's a whole um, length of vintage book pages. These are the uh, leaves that we're going to be using for this wreath from Dollar Tree and glitter. And that was a fun project. Okay, so now we're going to assemble our wreath. And um, the first thing I want to tell you is if you're going to do this kind of a color of wreath the, and you're going to use a Dollar Tree wreath, then select the gold one. And they have square and two different sizes of circles at my store, $1.25. Or go to um, you know any craft store and you can get one of these um, in a lighter color, all right? But just to make sure it's covered up, I'm gonna use this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna wrap it around my wreath. So let's just start right here. It's gonna disappear. And it is gonna be, you know what, I'm gonna cut it into shorter lengths because that'll be invisible and it's just too hard to wrap nine feet of burlap ribbon all, you know, pulled out at the same time. So you can see how super easy that is. I'm not sure if it will take that whole roll of, of this. And this ribbon is wired. So it's, it's okay. So I'm going to just glue this down on the back. That's the first bit. Hopefully I have enough for the whole thing. If I don't, then we'll improvise. I know I have more of this ribbon somewhere. <laughs> this is all I bought, so this is what I have for today. Unless I have more in my ribbon drawer. I'm not even really wrapping it that tight. And I have a bunch of burlap leaves from Dollar Tree that we'll be using. For this project, I would definitely use a low temperature hot glue gun because you can see I've got it all over my fingers and I'm not going to have huge blisters or anything terrible tomorrow like I might if I was using... Um, high temperature hot glue gun. Okay, I'll trim this one little bit up in a minute. By golly, you may not have enough. We'll see.
So I see lots of people on it. Holy cow, you guys are so generous. Look at all those stars, wow. Thank you so much, I so appreciate it. That is the kind of stuff that funds my trips to Dollar Tree <laughs> to get all the supplies and it just, it's one of the things that makes it possible for me to do this crafting here all the time. Okay, I'm looking in my drawer. And it doesn't look like I have any more of that same ribbon. So we're just gonna live <laughs> with it the way it is, okay? And my plan is to put the big acorn on one side and then to scatter these leaves. And today I have a mix uh, from all from Dollar Tree of these natural colored leaves. And these are sort of an olive green. I also had two other colors, which I'll show you, but I felt like they were too loud for this project. Um, these are kind of a burgundy color, and then there was this bright orange, which this is a good orange, but I wanted this to be more muted with um, natural kind of looking designs. So, um, so let's just start with the leaves to cover up this little bit of space that I don't have quite enough to do. Thank you for those stars, Cindy. I appreciate it. So what do you guys think so far? Well, I do have another project that I want to show you in just a second. Okay, I'm just going to start plunking this on here. I think these leaves are going to cover it up just fine. Okay, let me show you this other project. This one was from, I think we did this in 2000. It's a paper wreath. It's built on an embroidery hoop that I wrapped with this vintage encyclopedia paper. And then it has these little acorn shapes cut out. This is craft paper, this is vintage encyclopedia paper. And it has three of these little acorns that were, you know, this was kind of my inspiration. And I used those pins that I use all the time to draw some design on them. It's super lightweight. I did edge the, um, a lot of the different leaves with the pins. Can you see that? I didn't do all of them, but I did some of them. And so this is one of those projects that I really didn't think was going to turn into anything that I would really love, but I do. I totally love this. Um, that's why it's still hanging around here at my house over two years later. Okay. Let's see. Let's put a couple more leaves on here just to uh, make sure that we can't see um, that we can't see the wire. I'm going to tack these ones down too. Just kind of hard to get glue on that little teeny spot. Okay, we'll do one more leaf. another green right here and then we'll put our 
uh, large acorn right there. So what do you guys think? I know um, most people like to use, uh, you know, reds and oranges and, and um, kind of a yellow and stuff for, for fall, but do you like sometimes doing projects that are just very neutral? I do. I think what gives us interest is the different textures and then the leaf stems up. I'm going to have about 20 minutes of uh, string, of glue string work to do. It's kind of pretty already. Okay, and I generally like my wreaths to be off center. So I would probably make this the top, and then I would start building right here, and then I would add some of those smaller acorns on here. So that is what I think we're going to do. And then we may come back and add some more of these leaves. So. Okay. I'm going to take the plunge. large is the circle? Let me get my um, ruler and I'll tell you. Oh, I wonder if it says on the tag. Let me look at that. Do I still have that? It doesn't say. So let me get my ruler and I will measure. It's about a 14 inch from side to side wreath form. Here's the start of it. It's going to need some more glue to get this down completely secure. So I think this project could probably be out on uh, your front door as long as your front door is covered. It's not going to hold up at all if there's rain or snow that actually gets on it. All right, and now let's add a few of these little guys. And let's do a few more leaves. Okay. Oh, and I did want to show you that I took the metal off of these. When you get this kind of a leaf at Dollar Tree, it is going to have one of these uh, little metal stems that allow you to kind of bend your leaves. But I usually just pull that right off and toss it away. Unless I would need it specifically, um, I'll just toss it. So that's what I did with all of this stuff here. looking like right now. That's probably how I would hang it. So this acorn is almost standing up straight. And then I have ready to go, and I may add some more of these when they're finished, but I have two that have the light brown bottom and the dark brown top, and then one that has the dark brown bottom and the light top. So I'm going to Just plunk those on there just like this. Goodness. 
goodness, there are so many glue strings. The other thing I probably will do, what do you guys think? Isn't that cute? Does it need more leaves? I have one more of these green leaves that I could put somewhere else, and then I have a couple more of these brown ones. What do you guys think? Would you tell me in the comments if I need that? I probably will do some kind of a messy bow, which I like to think on my projects <laughs> before rushing into a lot of embellishment. So um, I want to hear what you guys say, and then I'll look at it and think on it for a little bit before I jump in to do a bow or anything. But tell me what you guys think in the comments. Does it need, or I could even do some jute, like around the, um, the top, the stem of this acorn here at the top. Yeah, I really want to know what you guys think. Use the oak leaf. Use the oak leaf or leaf. What, okay, somebody's saying that. So do you think I should put one more up here? Or one of these? Or it could be one of these smaller ones. And of course I'll tuck it in and make it pretty. That looks not too bad. Oh my gosh, and it's so lightweight. Um, that there, it's going to be no problem at all to hang it with a command adhesive little you know, this little strips. And to me, it says fall all the way through Thanksgiving. Uh, it's just very natural and it, it isn't screaming Halloween or specifically Thanksgiving. It's just to me, it's saying, uh, it's talking, it's telling me about the outdoors and, um, yeah, that's my thought. Maybe put one on for on back for dimension. Oh, like this? I don't know if I like that. Anyways, I think I am going to use this one right here. Can you see it? But I'll fiddle around with it. And I may put one more somewhere else, like maybe down here. But this was the project that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you liked it. It's a little different. Um, you know, I'm a huge stuffy lover. And when I'm all finished, I'll put some pictures here in these comments, as well as on my Facebook page, which is the DIY Dreaming page, of some of the different stuffies that we've made, because we've, we've been doing that for well over two years here. And we've done stuffies of carrots, of um, candy corn, of all kinds of different flowers, I'm trying to think, uh, rabbits, um, yeah, a lot of different stuffies. So I'll put some pictures in the comments of different stuffies for you to see. If you are interested in looking at any of the all over pattern stencils that I have on my website, these are great. They're a super good investment in your crafting supplies because you can use them for so many different things rather than, this is just my opinion, but rather than having a stencil that says something, I would rather have an all over pattern. Or if you're interested in looking at chalk paste or these, <gasps> these are my favorite, seriously, um, just say link and I'll get that for you so you don't have to go and wander around and figure out where things will be. I'll give you a direct link to those. Um, if you want to look right now, my website is magnoliadiy.com. The brown cat needs something like maybe Hello Fall. Ooh, she's saying that maybe we could put something right here. Well, 
I will have to investigate that because I think that's a very good idea. Um, but anyways, if you wanted to look right now at any of this Magnolia stuff, my website is magnoliadiy.com. Don't put a space in between the word Magnolia and the DIY, period, C-O-M, because if you do, it will take you to a barbecue store. So, oh, thank you, Judy says, I always make classy crafts. Brenda, I'll get you a link just as soon as I'm done. So I can't wait to sit down and read all of your comments. I'll answer all your questions. I'll get whoever wants links a link. If you liked this project, I would love it if you would consider sprinkling this video to your social media or if you're in any crafting groups that allow that sort of thing. If you want to sprinkle this video there, that would be awesome. What else? Oh, if you haven't already liked and followed this page, that would be great for you to do. You can look up here somewhere if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, if you would um, like, you can subscribe to my channel and you can like this video. Alrighty, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking for pictures from me of this. Feel free to send me your ideas. Um, and also be looking for pictures from me of some of the other fun stuffies that we've done over the years. So thanks for joining me. I hope to see you guys again tomorrow for more projects that will be quick and easy. They're um, going to be sometimes a little different. <laughs> um, they're going to be affordable. They are, you don't have to have fancy tools or be an artist. Um, and most of the time they're going to involve either faith, family, or flowers. So, if that sounds good to you, I'd love for you to come back again. And I'd love for you to tell your friends about this page. And thank you so much to everyone who did stars. You are so generous. That is just amazing and I so appreciate it. I hope that you liked this video um, and this idea. And I hope that you saw that, you know, sometimes you're going to have a little oops. Like I didn't have enough of this ribbon. But we just made it work. We didn't let that stop us. <laughs> we just figured out a way to make it work. So hopefully that inspired and encouraged you to have some fun crafting and not worry about your project being perfect. Alrighty, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to come around my desk to turn this off because it's too far for me to reach. <laughs>